So Manchester City have won three straight by, by quite a margin at that. Bayern Munich, a lot closer than in history in the past 10 seasons, but they've won 11 league titles in a row. Paris Saint-Germain have won eight out of the last 10 League One Uber Eats title. Serie A, we've seen with Juventus running away for, uh, I think it was it was seven seasons running, right? Consecutively, they've won it. And ever since then, um, we've had three different winners. But this season, we had Napoli run away with the league. It was pretty much wrapped up and done by March international break. Same thing goes for Barcelona in Spain. Now, of course, if you're fans of those clubs, it's great and all that. Of course, if you're a City fan, you're loving it. If you're a Bayern Munich fan, you love this. But for teams of other fans and just in general, neutral fans, we've become accustomed to this to the point where are we possibly looking at the top five European leagues being not competitive enough? I mean, we, we call the the French League or, or Bundesliga Farmers League, right? Because the one team just dominates every other team to such a huge extent where there really is no point of participating in the league other than maybe hopes of qualifying for the Champions League. So today we're going to dive into five ways. It's actually four, but you'll see why we included five to see if there are any viable ways that we can improve the current model that the European football leagues are being played in to make the league more competitive. And we take inspiration from not only the, the MLS, but also uh, South American leagues. Um, we're going to look at some of the things that they do, or even the Scottish Premier League. We're looking at something that they do. So let's let's dive right into it. The first one, I think this is the most obvious slash easiest to implement is pretty much just smaller leagues. Like we see with Bundesliga, 18 teams. There's a research actually from FIFA that says 16 teams is the most ideal for a league. But what makes 16 the, the magic number? Well, I, I don't know. I just, I remember reading an article from them saying how 16 is the most ideal. Um, But I say it's the easiest, but, but how do you kick off four teams from the league, right? That's that's tough. So, um, Well, even in smaller leagues, I still want to kind of understand that. Is that, is that saying, no, that we're going to kind of have like a playoff system like or like a, how they do it in America, like a Eastern Conference versus Western Conference? Or are you just going to shrink the size of the league as is? This is pretty much just shrinking the size of the league. So you would have... We'll finish in the bottom four. Southampton, Leeds, um, Leicester, and was it Everton that just remained safe by the skin of the teeth? Those four would go down and nobody would come up pretty much. And we would have 16 teams, so 30 games in a season. I mean, I'm trying to look on the big picture of how that helps. Is it just that, no, the percentage of matches that you play are going to be more competitive? Because maybe like City going up against a Nottingham Forest is well. I know they lost to them this season or this last season, but they should be they should be spanking them, right? And you know that that's a that's a that's a pretty much guaranteed win for City. So is that is that kind of part of the thinking? Would you say, or is it just solely down to the fact that there's there's less matches to play, so there's less chance for you to make up ground on other teams and have such a a large margin of of a lead on them. Well, I mean, I think it's both. If you have a 38-game season, and you mentioned, you mentioned two great teams, City and Nottingham Forest, the gap between those two teams, when it comes to, when it comes to quality, their depth, it's too big, right? When it comes to from August to May, 38 games, there's no way we're going to see Nottingham Forest get the better of City over the long run. And that's the beauty of the league, right? Of course, the best team, the so-and-so called best team wins. But there's just not, not enough balance in the league when it comes to that. The gap is just going to continue go, to grow bigger and bigger and bigger. The, the teams that finish higher are obviously going to 
get more money, more reputation, but be able to get better players. Where on the other hand, the lower uh, lower teams are, I don't want to say being screwed, but they just are, are already at a disadvantage. So closing that gap between those two those teams, I mean the top teams and the bottom teams, smaller leagues could help achieve that. So, no, hold on though. So, kind of what you're describing sounds like, kind of like the concept of a super league almost. Do you think that if we're really thinking about it, could that be at least, okay, no, because you don't want to necessarily exclude other teams from having the chance to be promoted to the Super League, but maybe, would you say that maybe the Super League could be that kind of Premier League in that sense, or like the top divisions, maybe it just shrinks down to eight teams and they just have the best eight teams. That's why it almost feels like you're playing Champions League football in the league. In terms of the quality, no, I mean this. This is what I'm saying, really. The women's super league in England, they have twelve teams. They play twenty two matches, so eleven home and away. The title was decided by one point this year, and over the past few seasons, if you look back at the the league table, from top to bottom, they're oftentimes only separated by a single digit point. So, compared to what we see in the Premier League. By match week 33, we have City at close to 80 points and we have Southampton at 20 points. That's a 60-point gap, you know? So, I mean, of course, Southampton is a, is a bad example because at, at that point in the season, they're going to be fighting for their lives to not get relegated. But we see too many dead rubber matches, to, especially towards the end of the season. So, shorter leagues would... I mean, think about it. Arsenal were top until 30 games into the season, right? So shorter leagues would mean more unpredictability, which to me is more fun, more exciting when it's, when things are unpredictable and more chances for underdogs like an Arsenal to add, have a genuine chance at piping Man City, the likes of City to the title. So, yeah, I feel like doing that scenario, underdogs, the standard of underdogs would have also increased too. So that's also a factor to consider. Right. And also another factor is uh, it'll also create more balance between the league games as well as the cup games. There is disproportionate amount of focus on the league games at this at this moment in time. Even the likes of Southampton, I know they beat City, but even the likes of uh, you know, those teams that are on the lower half of the table, they just don't care about the Cups anymore, whether it be the Carabao Cup or the FA Cup. If the league would were to shrink down to 30 teams, then we would most likely see teams place more value on these Cup games and bring those ex- excitement from, you know, the, the late 20th century. Uh, really, the whole, I mean, the FA Cup is the oldest competition in the world, right? So, it will bring some excitement back to those cup games that are losing their importance and value in the current game. Yeah, I wonder how that actually affects the league though itself because maybe that now no just pushes just more focus onto the cup, but what does that do for the league itself, you know? But I hear you still. There's, look, the small, I think the smaller leagues could definitely could definitely help. But I still like the aspect of the, the Nottingham Forest beating the City like we saw. You know, I, I like that. The Everton coming to beat City and Arsenal. That, that is cool to me. I well, like that. That'll still happen. Just because you have a smaller league doesn't mean Everton aren't going to be able to beat City or Arsenal. That result is going to matter more in a smaller league. Because that three points is now not out of 100, and 100 plus possible points. It's three points out of 90 possible points. Right. So, so there's less chance to develop a margin. Right. Yeah. So it's got every point is going to matter more. Yeah. 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 That's definitely big. What about what we discussed earlier about the, um, the American system with the, with the <laughs> conference and the playoffs? Yeah. I mean, the European listeners, if there are any of you, um, you might want to meet yourself a little bit, but playoffs are exciting. 
you know, playoffs. I mean, I don't, I don't get why they're so against the idea of using the playoff system to determine a winner. We see it in in other forms, such as the the championship playoffs, which is dubbed the play, playoff finals, dubbed the, the most expensive match in in football, and we see that in in the Bundesliga too. The 16th place of the Bundesliga goes to a playoff with uh, the third place team from the second Bundesliga to determine whether, I mean, if they stay or if the third place team gets promoted. Playoffs are exciting. Underdogs could have a mad run in the playoffs. Liverpool, they finished fifth. If the playoffs were in, were in place with the form they were in, um, in the later, later half of the season, who knows what they could have done against you know the the top tier teams. I'll give you an example. MLS, we know they have a conference system. They have also have playoffs where more than half of the teams make it into. I think it's sixteen out of thirty teams, right? Or maybe yeah, I think it's sixteen out of thirty. Over the past ten years, they've had eight different MLS Cup winners. They've also had MLS Cup is a winner of the playoff. They've also had seven different supporter shield supporter shield is almost like a just a league title um so th- those two are technically different but there's just so much um, seven different winners eight different winners in the playoffs only one of them overlapped so out of the nine occasions where a team won the the league race they didn't ended up they, they didn't end up winning the playoffs so how would you break it up if this was in like a England or a Spain? Would you would you break it up in in terms of location? So like north versus south or east versus west, or would you do it even like a maybe it's a placement system based on the season before? And like first to tenth gets in one conference, eleven, you know, maybe work it out like that. Yeah, I mean, well, to be honest, I don't know if the conference thing is necessary. North, south, east, west. I guess east west wouldn't work in England, but I don't know if that would that is necessarily needed, but we could possibly be looking at the top six. You know, with with all the big six, right? The top six teams make it to to the end of the season playoffs. Same thing as um the championship playoffs. They the four teams make it right. It's a home and away, and the final is at Wembley. First and second. So in this season, City and Arsenal would automatically advance to the next round. And then three, four, five, six, those teams will play off against each other. So Newcastle and Liverpool, um, United against Brighton, right? Brighton finished sixth. And the winners of those go on to face City or Arsenal. And again, the, the winner of all that will be crowned the, the playoff champions. I, whether you want to do it a separate, whether you want to call it a separate title or you want to, you, you don't want to crown a winner for the league. It doesn't matter. It just brings more excitement into the league. Yeah, that is so. Like that doesn't necessarily make the league more competitive. But I see what you're doing. You're giving another incentive to challenge right. for something. It's like the Europa League to the Champions League. This is like the playoff to the to the Premier League. Right. Exactly. You look at Arsenal. Arsenal once the title seemed lost, they had nothing to play for. Right. So. In the end, it didn't matter because they were they came in comfortably at second. But if the third place team was a lot closer in theory to Arsenal, they would have actually had something to play for because they they don't want to be drawn into another round of the playoffs. Same thing with between us and Newcastle. We were guaranteed right. in the Champions League, but third, fourth, it depends who you want to play. I, I I would not have wanted to play Liverpool, you know. So just again trying to get rid of dead rubber matches towards the end of the season and make everything mean something. Right, because it feels like, as you said, like second and third, there's basically no difference between the two. If you finish second, it's the same as finishing third, basically. And fourth. Yeah, fourth a little bit, because you have to go through the, the qualification. No, that's, that's been gone for years now. The last team to have to do that was Liverpool in 2017. So there's really no difference between second and fourth, or second yeah, I, to fourth. I guess even so, then at least it's the pot difference. That's the only thing that really matters. But at the end of the day, that's still random. No, the pot, again, the pot is only first matters for the pot. The pot, the first becomes automatically placed into the pot one 
second or fourth doesn't really matter for the UEFA, where, where, where UEFA is concerned. Nam, so there you go. So literally no difference between second, third, or fourth. Yeah. And that is why I said we had a better season than Arsenal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I know a lot of Europeans are going to be very opposed to the idea. Well, I don't know, because I know some of them are really into American football. I know a lot of them are into basketball. You know, playoffs are are the pinnacle of American sport. You know, April to June is the, there's basketball happening, there's hockey happening, there's college playoffs happening. It's it's mad. So imagine all those happening in in, in May, end of May. Yeah, no, I mean, boy, I, 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 I don't know. I couldn't tell you. I feel like, I feel like the the Premier League right now, just. I feel like it's. I feel like eventually it's gonna it's gonna map out to be equal, at least more equal than it is today. But because right now, other than City, everybody else right now is, is pretty even. But in terms, I wouldn't say pretty even, but more even than we've seen in the past. Like top four back in the day was way different than than it is right. today. So I feel like eventually it's gonna it's gonna map out. Um, but these introductions could definitely advance advance the the, the advance it, the progression still. Yeah. Well, enough of playoffs. Something similar to playoffs, but not necessarily. This is what they do in the Scottish Premier League. I don't know if there's any other leagues that do it, but this is called a split league. Actually, the, the Korean leagues do this too. They've adopted it from the Scottish Premier League. Um, what it is, is pretty much what the name suggests. You divide the league into half. So in, in Scotland, I'm pretty sure there are 12 teams. So uh, top six and the bottom six are separated and they play each other. What do you, what do you think of I mean could this be a realistic option for the Premier League? I don't know still because the, I feel like the Premier League the, the Premier League I feel like is going to if if they split it like that I feel like the passion is going to die out a little bit because I feel like I feel like they like being able to face off against against everybody in the same time rather than have the split. Well, in this case, you could. Uh, here's why I say this because most times you're, you're going to have the top sides finished in the top half, right? So this is kind of like the idea of the Super League. In this case, you would have the likes of City, Arsenal, uh, Man United, Liverpool, Newcastle, Brighton. Even though they already played each other twice, they would be playing each other again in this split league system, creating more excitement, the competitiveness for the run-in matches will increase. And I think I think I read this about the Polish League. What they do is they decrease the points that they've gathered up to that point in the season. They decrease it into half. And all the points you can get from the split league is doubled. Wait, hold on. So as in, you're saying after you've played everybody twice, Right. Then the points after that become double. Yes. So three points, six point becomes six points. Two points, be, uh, one point becomes two points, and on top of that, the points that you've gathered throughout the point of the season, it gets halved. So if you gathered eighty two points, you would have forty one points now heading into the split league. I feel like, like you asked me, right? Like, it could this work in England? I feel like it would definitely add some flavor and spice. I just feel like, as I say, England just likes the traditional knowing that they've played all the sides, the league is done, and that is that is deemed who is the champions. I feel like adding adding these things would 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 be like skeptical in the in the minds of the fans. But I feel like they could actually really spice things up, as you're saying. And you and like you say, you can even separate the 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 first round of fixtures, the first round of double fixtures as its own title in itself it kind of is similar to the playoff system like you're saying in the sense that 
the, like the Miami Heat, they were Eastern Conference champions. And then there's another chance to get another champ, the main championship after that. So you could kind of frame it like that in a sense too. Yeah. Well, the thing with this is that uh, if this doesn't really get rid of the dead rubber matches. I mean, unless you go to extreme measures, like I mentioned about having the points and making the points come double. Um, like the likes of Chelsea, they know they're not going to get relegated, even though they're in the, the bottom half of the split league. Um, and same thing goes for Brentford, who would have been in the top half. They know they're probably not making up that gap and winning the league or even making it to the Champions League, maybe into Europa League. But but yeah, this is something that we already see that's that's occurring again in, in the in the European leagues, albeit a lot smaller in, in size and reputation. But still, a, a very interesting concept. Yeah, this next one, no. I still want to know if I pronounce it right still. Apertura and <laughs> Clausura. <laughs> Just say it in English. What? Open and close, right? Yeah, pretty much, yeah. So this is pretty much... I mean, we, we do this a lot in, the, in anywhere. Uh, first half of the season team of the season like you know we take a break at midpoint of the season nothing is formal you know i mean we've primarily like recently introduced the winter break but nothing's formal right the there's no difference between who had a great first half and a great second half a good example would be arsenal they had a great first half they had an eight point lead on city um and second half it, the, all that points got caught up but what this system is suggesting one one way to do it is pretty much creating a first half of the season as its own season and the second half of the season as another season and have the winner of those two seasons meet again like a playoff session and the winner of that game will be crowned the the official winner in a sense I kind of like that tactic. I mean, I'm just saying that because it would have given us a chance. <laughs> no, but I mean, I do find it interesting. And the reason being is because I feel like teams can um can make up for lost ground early on in the season. I believe that it kind of gives every team a refresh. And what it does as well is it tests the team who were performing for the first half of the season. It tests them to keep it up and say, how well can you perform? in the second half, but that actually raises raises attention to me then. So let's say that the team who comes first in the first half of the season comes last in the second half of the season. They would, they still, still, they would still, yeah, they would still have a chance at the <laughs> actual title. So then I raise that question then. So does that then, what, what's the opposite of incentivize? Be in, be, like, be incentivize. Be incentivize, yeah. Um, does that de-incentivize the champions of the Apertura to perform <laughs> in the Clausura? Yeah, I mean, you could you could almost make a, a case that uh, you would rather win the, the closing season because the momentum is huge in football. You know, whether you win the, the opening season or not doesn't matter five months later. You want to be heading into that crucial game off of a off of a winning win, off of winning the, the league. Um, or you can simply have two winners in a season, you know? So But look no. on it though. Look on it. All right. So like look on though if you win the, the opener. If I win the opener, I'm gonna say, yo, I'm gonna rest my players, make sure they're ready for the final, make sure everyone's clean, healthy. I give the young players a shout, and maybe coming up to like the last stretch, then I start playing the side, get them in rhythm, and then prepare them for the final. Or you could say, you know what? I'm gonna win both the opening and the closing season. So there's no debate, no question as to who was the best team this in this season. Right. There's just no playoff at that point. Right. Although in in countries like Uruguay, um, on top of the two actual winners, another team that gets to actually play, um, one of the teams that actually gets to play is the the team with the best record combined. So this is looking at the whole season combined. So even oh, if you wow. didn't win the league in either opening or closing seasons, if you had the best record, you still get a chance to go for that. So again, that incentivizes 
teams to actually you know try to keep up you know so yeah that is a good point because that that you know that was going to be my next thing as well like if you know you're not going to make it then you just kind of you're dead out from early but that that is a good point as well still right so if you go back four years ago when Liverpool came one point short of City after winning 97 points they would they would have a chance at it instead of missing out by one point but by by what was it it was in not even inches right micro inches yeah from, yeah from that clearance so I mean no uh, but that's what I'm saying though about the, the the traditional league system is that you know that was going to be my next point on it is that I enjoy the fact that every single match in the league counts and you have to be on your game from day one to day 38 every single day I feel like in this system you can have that off day early on in the season and make it up at the end or you can have the off day at the end of the season if you perform out in the beginning I like knowing that every single game counts and you're taking into consideration every single game who truly was the best throughout the entire season. Because as you said, in the final, the momentum can take over. And maybe that's not a true depiction of who was better. Suppose in the Apertura, they got 93 points as opposed to the Clausura, they got 80 points. Who was the best, right? Yeah, I mean, that's why we have the fifth argument to say do nothing why change what's working <laughs> yeah and that's honestly that honestly might be it. like what's 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 wrong with right now we'll go we'll go back to the point of the leagues are getting too com- competitive i mean sorry too not competitive <laughs> yeah i mean they're getting then- too so what? Well, yeah. So exactly. I mean, why are you discrediting teams who have done good work to get to that stage? You know, right? Uh, okay. There's there's talking points over City. I mean, the 115 charges. Of course, maybe City is not the best example, but either way, money doesn't guarantee you success. The City have built extremely well to get to that stage. So right. W- what's What's wrong with the fact that a team you're almost giving the teams that are run well a disadvantage? You're trying to bring those teams down, where in fact they deserve it. I, I, I'm not gonna say they, they deserve it off the back of 115 charges, but if you disregard that, I mean they deserve it. Right, they've spent their money well. In is what you're really trying to say. But at the end of the day, can you look on it and say, not all the rest of those teams had those opportunities to even try and spend the money in the way that you're saying? Like, I agree with you. Fulham tried. It didn't work. You know, there's teams that, that try and it just doesn't it doesn't work out. And then City have done it well. But then again, they've had unlimited chances and unlimited budget as opposed to these other teams who don't have necessarily... They get one chance to try it out. And if it flop, it flop, bro. City can always make it back up. They can always just cover it back up with just the next signing. Right. I mean, they can just sign Calvin Phillips to sit on the bench for four, 40 million pounds. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. And then they can sign Cancelo for 60 and just dash him out. Yeah. But it's crazy. I, I, I do think something needs to be done. Not artificially. Maybe some of the ideas that we've presented are quite artificial. Um, for example, like smaller leagues. I don't know if that's necessary. 20, 20 teams been working fine. Every Almost every league has 20 teams. Um, it's fine. But this is all in the hopes of we, we need some competition in the league. Yeah, this is all, these are all just ideas, right? Like if you have any ideas... Let us know as well. Like we we just we're just looking for ways to make it more unpredictable, as you said, more competitive, more. Wow. Yeah. You know, yeah. Well, more I have an idea. Are able to win it. I have an idea to make it more competitive. What? Are... Charge City for their wrongdoings and disband honestly, the team. Honestly, that really, honestly, it really comes down to that. At the end of the day, just put financial fair play in and just use it properly and done. Don't don't let them 
go around it. Don't let them get into the loopholes and get around it. You need to protect it better than that. Simple. And I mean, we might be seeing that with the, the Saudi uh, owners and, and stuff too. Just these, these people are always going to find a loophole, try to abuse the system. I mean, hell, I, I would even, I would too, if I spent that much money and I could take a shortcut to success. But Well, as you said earlier, the money is not always spent right. So let us know. You think you think the Saudis are spending the money right? <laughs>